Hey everyone, Pastor Mike here. Do you ever think about your life and wonder, what's the point? Sometimes we're sitting in a classroom or another Monday at work or another day raising kids or going through life and we wonder, what's the point and what's the purpose? In the midst of the daily grind and the struggle, it's hard to see what God is doing and sometimes it's hard to sense that God is even there at all. And that's why I want you to check out my latest sermon series called, What's the Point? It's a deep dive into the biblical book of Esther, a book of the Bible that, interestingly enough, never once mentions the name of God. And yet, behind the scenes, God is working powerful things, good purposes for the good of his people. You can check out this sermon series right now on Time of Grace with Pastor Mike Novotny, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And of course, you can watch it at timeofgrace.org. If someone asked me how to do something significant with their life, you know what would be the first piece of advice I would give them? Think small. See, I think a lot of times when we talk about significance, we think of things like going overseas and doing missionary work in a foreign country, or giving a six-figure donation to charity, or starting a nonprofit that serves an underserved group of people. Those are the things that we often think of. We think of dreaming big and shooting for the stars and doing these big, splashy things. But what I would tell someone who's trying to do something significant with their life is simply to think small. And I would say that not because there's anything wrong with doing big, splashy things. I would say that because that's what Jesus says many times in his word. There are all kinds of stories of Jesus shining the spotlight, not on people who are doing big things, but on people who are doing small, seemingly insignificant things. One of those stories is in Mark chapter 12. Jesus is watching people at the temple give their offerings, and he sees people come up and put in the modern day equivalent of thousands of dollars, and yet he says nothing. And then this woman comes up, this widow comes, and she puts two little pennies into the offering box. And when she does, Jesus calls his disciples over, points them to her, and says, This woman has done something significant. This woman has done something pleasing in God's sight. She's put more than all of these other people into the offering today. There's another story in Mark chapter 9 where Jesus tells his disciples as he's sending them out, he says, if anyone gives you a cup of water in my name, that person will not lose their reward. I could go on and on with these examples. I'll give you one more. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The examples he gives before that are of giving someone something to eat when they're hungry, something to drink when they're thirsty, clothes when they're in need of clothes, going to visit them when they're sick or in prison. These are the things that Jesus calls our attention to. And I don't know about you, but those things don't seem all that big or splashy to me. In fact, a lot of them seem pretty insignificant. See, you may have never gone overseas and and done missionary work in a foreign country. You may have never given a six-figure donation to charity. But I bet you've given someone some food before. Whether you made it or ordered it from DoorDash, whether it was your kids or your roommate, one of your siblings or your friends, I bet you've done something like that for someone before. It may have seemed seemed insignificant at the time, but it was significant to Jesus. And here's why. Because it's not actually about the action itself at all. It's about the attitude behind that action. See, Jesus wasn't impressed with the amount of money that that woman put in the offering box. He wasn't impressed that people knew how to pour a cup of water or how to give a meal to someone who was hungry. Jesus was not saying that the way to earn his approval is by doing a bunch of small, nice things for people. What he was saying was that what made those things significant was that they were doing them in his name. See, The funny thing about significance is that the more you chase it, the more it eludes you. If you're trying to earn significance from God, you'll never get there. You'll never do enough. You'll never feel like you are enough. What Jesus shows you 
is that significance isn't earned, it's given. Significance comes from a heart that knows I was worse than sick or in prison. I was worse than hungry or in need of clothing. I was spiritually dead. I was lost with no hope of finding my way back to God on my own. And when I was, Jesus came and found me. He rescued me through his death and resurrection. And now I have hope. I have forgiveness. I have eternal life because of what he has done for me. And because of what he's done for me, I have significance. See, when we realize that our significance isn't earned, it's given, that produces an attitude in our hearts that wants to thank God any way we possibly can. It's that faith in our hearts, that attitude that makes us want to go out and find anything we can do for another human being as a way of thanking God. And when we do, Jesus tells us that no matter how small that action is, when it's done in his name, it is significant to him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we all want to do something significant and so often we're kept from doing that by the idea that we have to do something big or flashy. Help us to see the significance of things that the world might consider insignificant. Help us to see that even small things done in your name and with faith in in our hearts are significant to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.